the word shocked. Something gross happens one time. I was just so shocked. Why? <laughs> Why? I was just, could you just believe it? I was just so shocked by what she said. That's just the way she was talking. You need this expectation. The expectation not of romanticism or of utopianism, but the expectation of perfection or the manifestation of protection. What you need, what I need, is the expectation of the mercy of God. Let me say that again. What you need and what I need is the expectation of the mercy of God. In this fallen state in which you and I live, redeemed by Jesus Christ, yet possessing an old nature that has not been eradicated, we can potentially live up to what any sinner can do. And we can do it too. But as we learned on Wednesday night, if we understand that we are being chased by the mercy of God, and that's what David meant when he said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The key to David's life, knowing what a sinner he was, was understanding that he had all that, all that while being chased by the mercy of God led him beside him. So here's the thing. We uh, have to face the reality of sin and death. Sin came by one person, and so did death. Why do we die? Because we're sinful. We have a sinful nature. It's, it's the price we pay of being a fallen race. You ever wonder why you go back to the Old Testament and a guy like Methuselah lived to be a Pastor Pete, you really believe he lived that long? Oh, she did. And, and yet we find where the Bible is, we look at the degradation of the race, where God comes to a point in time where he says, be glad if you get three score and twelve. It's a long way from a thousand to seventy-two thousand Do you see it? Son in law was 44 years old and lost a four, a three and a half year battle with cancer and started to be like kidney. I told the guys, if you want to get an example of our son in law, put dark hair in a dark gold tee with a little gray on the damn watch show, and you've got James Action. You're about 6'6, six, six, you're about 6'6. Six, six.
Terry said some surgery years ago when Sean was two, and Mimi says back then he was moving chairs. Furniture. Uh, moving furniture at two years old. So you can imagine how big Sean was. I'm already telling the NFL about it. <laughs> he was with his daddy and mama and his grandmother when they made the decision to unplug him. You understand what that means? Have you ever had to do that? Did you put that in your will? Don't plug me in or unplug me or whatever. Do you, you got all that covered? We do. When there was no longer hope, they unplugged me. And my daughter shared with me on the phone. Daddy and his heart beat once and twice. He was gone. The minute they unplugged him, he had two heart beats and he knew Jesus. See, my brother, the mortician back in Texas, was right when he told me, brother, one out of one people. And so we have got, if you're going to get, a, get your arms around this believer's protection thing, you've got to understand the reality of sin and death. You've got to deal with it. Amen. Number two, though, there's some good news. That's why God provided the cross. In that same passage, for as through the one man's disobedience, talking about Adam and Eve, the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. All that means is Jesus Christ died in your place. He's not on the cross, is he? We just celebrated that. He's alive. Because I live, you live also, he said. Why? Because sin and death, God loved us so much, he said, I have got to deal with the problem of sin and death. And so he did, didn't he? Amen. He gave up one son to gain billions of sons. Understand, daughters are sons in God's, in God's terminology. He gives up one son to gain billions of sons. In Corinthians, Paul says that that's the wisdom of God. One man, Jesus Christ, on one piece of wood just over 2,000 years ago, at one point in history, died for the sin and the death of the entire world, then, now, and to come. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. We have a promise. And when you and I look at the cross, we are reminded that we must, we must blast away the expectation of perfection that romanticism brings. And we must blast away the manifestation of utopianism that the flesh brings into our life. Those ideologies that are just totally so negative and false because they're not rooted in the reality of life as, as defined in the word of God. We've got to blast all that out of our lives. Listen to me now, because every time we look at a cross, we need to call sin what it is. Sin. Amen. Your sin and my sin cost our Heavenly Father His Son. 